Welcome back and welcome to part 3 of this stylized animated forest meadow blender tutorial series. If you haven't seen the previous parts then definitely check out the tutorial playlist with the link in the description. So in the previous part we had finished all the plants and the foliage and we've also done the trees and so in this part we're going to start creating the landscape and do the other part of the environment like the lighting and the sky. And speaking of landscapes I wanted to let you know about a really great blender add-on for creating your own landscape landscapes in Blender. With the Terrainscapes add-on, you can create your own custom landscapes. Start by adding a terrain, and then you can load different mountain presets. You can also combine different layers of mountains on your terrain. The detail levels of the mesh is also customizable. The add-on also comes with material presets to add materials to your landscapes, like rock and snow to the mountains and grass to the ground. The add-on also comes with many different biomes to add to your landscapes, like a mixed forest, jungle, rocky forest, bushes, and other biomes. You can also add different object layers, like rocks, grass, plants, and trees. You can find my full add-on review video with the link in the description, and if you purchase the add-on through my affiliate link, you'll be helping to support this channel. Alright, so I'm going to start by adding the lighting and also the sky. So I'm going to go to the add menu, and for the lighting, we're just going to use a sunlight. We're just going to have some pretty simple lighting, so we'll add a light we'll add a sunlight. And I'm gonna rotate the sunlight over a little bit and bring it up here. Let's also hold down the Z button and I'll move my mouse up into the rendered view so I can see the light. And I'll just bring the sunlight over here so it's kind of out of the way of the objects. So bring it over here and then let's go over here to the light settings. And I'm gonna turn this strength value up to a six so that it is quite a bit brighter. And then you could make the color maybe a slightly yellow color if you wanted to, to make it look more like sunlight, but I'm just going to leave it as a white color. Now I do want to change the angle right here, because the angle is going to make the shadows look more soft or sharp. And to show you what I mean, I'm going to go to the add menu, and I'm just going to add a plane real quick, and I'll scale the plane up, and let's just zoom here into the objects. And then let's just select the light again. So if the angle is turned very small, the shadows are very, very sharp, and so this is how it would look like on a very sunny day. If, however, it's a really overclassed cloudy day, then the shadows are going to be much softer. So you can see if I turn the angle up, the shadows are very soft. So I'm going to turn my angle to a value of 6, and that way the shadows will be pretty sharp, but they will just be slightly soft on the edges. So I can just select this plane here and we'll just delete it. So I now want to create the sky background, and we're going to be creating it procedurally with the nodes for the world lights. So let's go here to the shading tab, and then I'll hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view. And then right over here on the shader editor, instead of using the object nodes, we can use the world nodes. So the world nodes is going to have this background background right here and there is a color. However, I want to make kind of like a gradient to make it look like sky and then we'll also be adding in some clouds. So let's go to the add menu and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a sky texture. This is a cool sky texture which is built into Blender and then this type here, we're going to change it to this one here, the Hosek slash Wilkie. I may be pronouncing that wrong but we're going to change it to this one here and we're going to put the color into the color of the background so we can actually see it. So this gives us some really cool sky light. Let's also click and drag this little circle here, and I can drag it up a little bit, and I think that looks just a little bit better. And then this ground albedo, I want to turn this all the way up to 1 so that it's a bit brighter, so I'll turn that to 1. Now I do want to change the colors a bit because they look a little bit gray right now, so I'll go to the add menu, and I'm going to search for the RGB curves, and we'll put the RGB curves after the sky texture. And then we can use the RGB curves to change the colors. So let's first use this C here, which is for color, and I'm going to drag this one up a little bit just so that everything is a bit brighter. Let's also click here on the R for red, and this one here I'm going to drag down a little bit because I want less red, so something like that. Then let's click on this next one here, which is G for green, and this one I'm going to drag a little dot right up here so that it's a bit more green, but then I can click here to add another dot, and I'm going to drag this dot down a little bit, and this will make it a bit more contrasty, so you can kind of see how that looks. There's kind of a nice gradient there, and then I do want to add a bit more blue. So if I click here on the B for blue, I just want to drag this one way up here into this corner, and so that's going to make it more of a blue color. You can see if I turn it down, there's less blue, but if I bring it up here into this corner, there's more blue. So something like that. So now we have a nice sky gradient with some lighter blue and then some darker blue. Now I also want to create some procedural clouds in the sky. So I'll go to the add menu, and I'm going to search for the noise texture. We'll stick it here, and with the noise texture selected, I'll press Control T, and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I want to use the object 
coordinates, so we'll put the object into the vector. And I can control shift and select the noise texture, and we're gonna use this to create the clouds. Now I wanna squish the noise down a little bit so they look more like clouds. So here on this mapping, we can change the scale Z value to squish it down. So I'm gonna turn it to a value of five. And then let's change the noise texture settings. So on the scale here, I'll turn this to a four. Let's also turn the detail to the max of 15, and I will turn the roughness up a little bit to a 0.6. So that's starting to look like clouds, but I do need to make it much more contrasty. So I'll go to the add menu, and I'm gonna search for a color ramp, and we'll put the color ramp here after the noise texture. And then if I drag these values closer together, that'll make it more contrasty. So I'm actually gonna flip these values. So I'll have the white value here, and then I'll have the black value over there. So so where the black values are, that is where those clouds are gonna be. So now what I wanna do here is mix it into the actual sky here that we've created. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for the mix color node. And we'll drop the mix color node right here. So the RGB curves, this is gonna go into the bottom one. And then this color ramp color, this is gonna go into the factor. So the factor is determining what parts will be color A and what parts will be color B. So now if I control shift and select this background here, you can see that there's just a little bit of clouds in the sky. And then for the color here, I want it to be fully white. So on color A, we can just make this fully white. So now there's just a little bit of clouds. And then if you wanna change how many clouds there are, then you can drag the color ramp around. So if you make it more contrasty, there's less clouds, or you can make there be much more clouds and you can also make the clouds more sharp. And of course, if you wanted them to be more detailed, you could like turn the roughness up or turn the roughness down if you want the clouds to be more blobby. So you can kind of play around with some of those settings, but I'm gonna leave this just like that. So now we have a nice blue sky with some little clouds here and there. Now I also wanna change the color management of the scene just to make everything look a bit more contrasty and kind of pop up the colors and make it look more saturated. So let's open up the side panel here and I'm gonna to go to the render tab and we're gonna scroll down here to the color management. Open up the color management and I'm gonna use the view transform of Filmic and then on the look here, I'm gonna change this to very high contrast. So now it kind of pops out the colors and makes things more contrasty and saturated and that does look quite a bit nicer. So let's press Control S to save. So let's go back here to the layout, and I now want to actually model the landscape. So I'll go to the Add menu, let's go to Mesh, and I'm just gonna add a new plane. Now I want it to be much larger, so I'll hit S to scale, and I'll type in 50 and then enter so it is much bigger. And actually just for now, let's hide the plants and the flowers and the grass. We're just gonna hide those for now. And also what we can do is we can hold down the shift key and we can select the environment or the landscape and also the sun, and I can move them into a new collection. So I'll press the M key to move them into a new collection. Let's click on new collection. I can just rename this to like scene and then click on okay. And then this scene collection, we can drag it up here and stick it on the top because this is the main one that we're going to be using. So now I have the scene with the plane and the sun, and I could double click on the plane to rename it and rename it to like ground. All right, so let's keep on creating the ground model. So I scaled the plane up by 50, but I also want to make it longer. So I'm going to scale it on the Y axis and I'll type two and then enter. So now it is much longer. So we can have the camera kind of here looking into the scene. And then now that we've scaled this, I'll press control A and I'll just apply the scale. So I'll now go into edit mode and I want to subdivide it so it has more geometry. But I first want to add a loop cut in the center so that when we subdivide it, the faces will be even. So I'll press control R to add a loop cut and I can left click and right click so that the loop stays in the center. And then I can press the A key to select the entire mesh. And I'm gonna press Control E and Control E will bring up the edge settings and I'm gonna choose subdivide. And then after you subdivide it, you can open up the subdivide settings right here and you can turn up the number of cuts. And on the amount here, I'm gonna turn the number of cuts up to 60 so that it is pretty detailed. And I want it to be pretty detailed because we are gonna be using a displace modifier to kind of make the environment bumpy. So let's close the subdivide and we can go back to object mode. So let's now make a material for this ground. So let's go over here to the shading and let's click on the world here and I'll choose object instead because we want to create the material. And I can click on new here to add a new material and I'll rename the material to ground. 
So for this material, I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for a noise texture. We'll drop the noise texture here and I can press control T with the noise texture selected. And let's use the object coordinates. So I'll put the object into the vector and then I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. So for this texture, I wanna turn the scale up to 20. So it is very detailed. And then the detail will turn to 15 and the roughness will turn up a little bit to a 0.65. So it's a bit more detailed. And if I zoom in really close, you can see there is that noise and we're going to be using this to create kind of a cartoony stylized grass texture on the plane. So I now want to create the colors. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for the color ramp and we'll put the color ramp here after the noise texture. Let's drag these over so we have a bit more space and then we'll make the two colors. So I do want to make them a bit more contrasty so they're easier to see and to tell apart. So I will bring them together a little bit. And then here on this black color, this is going to be a light green. So we'll make it kind of light, maybe not quite that light. And then this one here, this is going to be kind of like a dark green. And if you want to use the same exact colors that I'm using, then the light green will be a hex value of 4D a a two nine and the dark green is going to be a hex value of two nine five nine one b now i also want to create another variation of this texture which is going to have dirt colors and then we're going to mix the dirt and the grass together so that there will be little patches of dirt so i'm going to press Control shift d Control shift d will duplicate the nodes but keep the wires plugged up so we now have another color ramp up here and this one i'll drag this color over here and i'll drag this one over to about here and we can Control shift and select it to preview it. And this one, I'm gonna have the dirt colors. So this color here, this is gonna be kind of like an orangey color and then make it a bit darker. And then this one here, click on the color. This one is also gonna be orange and then make it darker, but we'll make this even darker for a dark dirt color. And the hex values that I'll be using for the light dirt color will be a hex value of 5D, 4, 7, 2, C. And then the dark dirt, this is gonna be a hex value of 3, 8, 2, 2, 1, 1. So I now need to create a mask, which will tell it to blend between these two textures. First, let's blend the two textures together. So I'll go to the add menu and I can search for the mix color. We'll drop the mix color here and I can put this color ramp into color A and then this dirt one, this is gonna go into color B. So now we have the factor, which is gonna blend between the grass or the dirt. So let's create another texture for the factor. So I'll select the noise texture and I'll press control shift D to duplicate the node, but keep the wire plugged up. And I'll control shift and select the noise texture to preview it and let's turn the scale to like a one and then also this roughness here i'll turn this up to like 8.7 so i can now click on any of the color ramps and i can press shift d to duplicate and i'll drop it here after this noise because i want to make it more contrasty and if i select the color ramp i can hit the backspace to reset it and let's drag the black tab way over here to make it much more contrasty so that's going to be our mask between using the grass or the dirt so let's take the color and color and I can put that into the factor. And then we can take this mix result and I'll put that into the base color of the shader and I can control shift and select the shader to preview it. So now you can see that most of it is the grass, but you can see there are just little bits of brown. And if you want there to be more dirt, you could turn this dirt up here so there's more dirt or you can turn the grass down and you can make it more contrasty if you want to. But I wanna have the dirt be very, very subtle. So that's why I'm gonna have it be mostly the grass. And then I want it to be a pretty rough material. I don't want it to be that reflective. So here on the roughness, we'll turn that all the way up to one. All right, let's go back here to the layout and I'll press control S to save and we'll go back to solid view. And I now wanna make this look kind of bumpy. So let's go here to the modifiers and we can add another displace modifier. So I'll click on add modifier and I can search for displace. And then we wanna click on new to add a new texture. And here on the name, we can just rename this to ground. And then we'll click on this button here and this will go over to the texturing panel and I want to use the noise texture. So on the type here, instead of image or movie, we're going to use clouds, which is Blender's procedural noise texture. So now you can see it's making it look all bumpy. And here on the size, I want to make this pretty big. So I'll turn it to like a 30. So now you can see it's just making the ground look slightly bumpy. If I click back here on the modifiers, I want to make it a bit more strong. So here on the strength, I will turn this up to a five. So it's a bit stronger. And then we can also use the object context menu and shade the object smooth. So now you can see we have a nice bumpy landscape. 
And then let's also add a camera. So I'm gonna move my view kind of down here and I'll press shift day for the add menu. We can add a camera and then just move your view to wherever you want the camera to be. And you can press control alt numpad zero. Control alt numpad zero will bring the camera to where we are. I can hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view. And you can see we have now a nice environment with a background sky and some clouds. Now I do wanna change the focal length of the camera. So if I click here on the camera, I can go to the object data properties and the focal length is going to make it look more like a fisheye effect or more of a zoomed in effect. I'm going to turn the focal length to 40 because 40 will actually allow the camera to see a little bit more stuff around it and I think that looks just a little bit nicer. I can also maybe bring the camera down a bit on the z-axis. All right, that's pretty good. Now I also wanna model another landscape object, which is gonna be really far in the background, and it's basically just gonna look like some small hills. So let's go back to solid view, and we're just gonna model that. So I'll press Shift A for the add menu, and let's go here to mesh, and I'm gonna add a plane. And I'll scale the plane up so it's quite a bit bigger. So maybe scale it so it's about that big, and I can bring it over here, make it a bit bigger, and then I'll press Control A and just apply the scale. So I can now go into edit mode and I'm going to scale it way up so it is much longer. So something like that, maybe make it a little bit bigger and make the entire thing a little bit bigger. All right, so I now want to add some loop cuts to add more geometry. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut. And then I wanna scroll my mouse wheel and I just wanna keep on scrolling my mouse wheel until there are lots of cuts. So something like that, maybe a little bit more. And then I can left click and right click so they stay where they are. Now if I go over here to the side, I wanna add some more loop cuts. So I'll press Control R and I can scroll my mouse wheel and I wanna make it so that they are about a square shape so they're kind of an even amount of detail so I'll left click and right click so now you can see each one is pretty close to a square shape all right so now what I can do is hold down the alt key and I'm just gonna select this loop of vertices there and then you can press the O key or click right here to turn on the proportional editing and I want to make it look like a hill so it'll come up and then come down so I'll hit G to grab and bring it up on the Z axis and then you can scroll your mouse wheel to change the size of the proportional editing and you can just bring that up there so now you can see it kind of looks like there's a hill you can also alt select the back loop there and bring it down on the Z axis a little bit so bring it down like that Go back to object mode. You can use the object context menu and shade it smooth. And then let's press control two. Control two is gonna add a subdivision surface modifier with two levels, so it has even more geometry. So now I also wanna add a displacement. So I'm gonna select this object here and then shift select this object here and I'll press control L and I want to copy the modifiers. So now this object also has kind of some random bumps. But then I wanna duplicate the ground texture so that it is not gonna affect the other texture. So I'm gonna click on this button right here to duplicate it. And then here I can just rename it to background instead of ground. So rename it to background. And then if I click on this button here, this will go to the texturing properties. And I'm gonna change the size. And I found that a size of 17 looks pretty good. So now you can see there's a bit more bump. And then also we can go into edit mode and I can just select some of the vertices here and hit G to grab. And I just wanna make it kind of bumpy. So randomly, they're just gonna be some little hills and bumps here. So just kind of move this up and down, just kind of like that. So it's a little bit more random. So now you can see we have a nice backdrop for the background and it kind of looks like some hills. Let's also bring the entire thing down on the Z axis a little bit. So if I go into the camera view by hitting the zero on the numpad, you can see that'll be a nice background. Now I do want to make the background kind of be circular and round around the rest of the environment. So I'll go back to edit mode. I'm going to hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices there. And I'll hit G to grab and R to rotate and G to grab. And I'm just going to rotate this environment kind of around a bit. So that's rotating around the environment. Also select this here, rotate that and move it over. All right. So just use that proportional editing to kind of move it around. And I'm not too concerned with it getting kind of stretched because it is gonna be pretty far in the background. I'm just making it round so that if the camera looks around the 3D scene, this will be more in the full background. All right, you can also stretch it out and move it over. And this part here, kind of stretch it out and move it over. 
All right, so something like that is pretty good. And then you can rotate it over and move it over here if you want, because the camera is kind of pointed in this direction. All right, let's go into the camera view, see how that's looking. So you can see we have a nice backdrop all around. And also one more thing I might do is just bring it back a little bit farther. And then for the material, I'm gonna go over here to the shading and let's go into the rendered view and I'll go into the camera view and I'll click on the background and then let's click on the drop down and I want to choose the same ground material but then I just want to make this material a bit darker so I'm going to click on this button here to duplicate the ground and I'll rename it to background instead because it's kind of a bright green right now and I want to make it kind of less distracting and less visible I just want it to be kind of a subtle hills in the background so if we make it darker you won't notice it quite as much and it'll kind of blend into the background so I'm going to go to the add menu and to make it darker I can just simply add a hue saturation value because this has a value to control the brightness so I'll put the hue saturation value here right before the base color and then this value here I can just turn it way down to like a 0.5 so now you can see those hills are nice and dark in the background all right, let's go back here to the layout and I'm gonna open up the scene here and I just wanna rename these objects. So this one is ground, we have the sunlight and the camera and then this object here, this is the plane. I will just rename this one to background just to keep my scene nicely organized. Let's press Control S to save and this will wrap it up for this part of the tutorial series. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you're enjoying the tutorial series so far. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase the finished project files, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, the links are in the description. And also on my Gumroad store and Patreon page, you can get access to lots of Blender content like 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, procedural materials, geometry node modifier setups, and so much more Blender content. So if you'd like to make a one-time purchase of one of my products, my Gumroad store is a great way to do that. Or if you'd like to help support the channel monthly, then joining one of my Patreon memberships is a great way to support the channel monthly. And I do really appreciate all of your support, it really does make Make these free videos possible. So in the next part, in part four, we're going to be using geometry nodes to place the trees and the plants and the foliage all around the 3D scene. So when the next part is released, it's going to be right up there on the end screen and the link will be in the description. So I hope you're enjoying this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next part.